is our next revision video building on the financial statements video 3.5 3.6 profitability liquidity efficiency ratios now first ratios are the profitability ratios take a look at the gross profit margin and the profit margin it used to be referred to as a net profit margin I have the terminology here on the screen for you as well work through your terminology what is ratio analysis you know why exactly are you using ratios they're the tools to interpret the financial statements the financial statements communicate performance of a business for a certain period of time so here you're assessing the profit profit position and the profitability now always an issue for students there's a difference between profit and profitability now what does a gross mar profit margin show it's the percentage of your sales revenue which is profit and it's profit from trading go back to your profit loss account it's the money you earn from selling goods or services take away the cost to you of those goods or services you sold to generate that revenue you're looking to make the difference between the two as large as possible the profit margin is gross profit take away the rest of your operating expenses your other business expenses so it tells you basically the operating profit the profit from your normal day-to-day -day business activities from the stakeholders point of view the figure itself as i previously mentioned isn't uh, that useful it needs to be compared but you also need to be able to particularly for the exam is comment analyze evaluate strategies which could be used to boost the gross profit margin again okay. increase sales revenue that's back to marketing new product development volume value of sales promotional strategies think about usps pd and elastic pricing if your brand identity is so strong the number of substitutes available in the consumer's eyes will be low therefore you can charge higher prices simply by having an effective promotional strategy okay. change your pricing strategy to fit in with the current business environment look at your steeple what's happening at the moment the global environment has been influenced by the war in ukraine and the impact on energy costs think about the supply chain issues they were due to the pandemic which haven't totally been cleared all of this has influenced inflation in countries uh, inflation had knock-on effect in terms of consumer spending so if you're a business how are you going to boost your sales revenue bang and back to pricing back to new product range value product ranges okay cut your prices but would that have an impact on your brand perception uh, cost of sales I've given you the calculation then first bullet point a lot of teachers don't tend to explain how cost of sales is actually calculated uh, it's simply opening stock plus purchases for the year minus closing stock so think about how that figure can actually be reduced find new suppliers use the internet lots of b2b uh, sites out there doesn't matter where you are in the world okay you can go online as a business and buy in bulk and have products shipped to you yeah, you know, cutting out people in the chain. So think about your place, your distribution chain. You know, instead of buying someone from someone in your home country, you know, if you go direct to a supplier, wherever they happen to be in the world, you can cut people out in the chain, and that will therefore decrease your costs. Stock control systems. If you haven't come across stock control, yes. Um, when you do, look at JIT and look at just in case. Just in case is where you have stock sitting on the shelf. To cover eventualities just in time is where you have daily deliveries i.e you keep no stock or minimal stock which is used up the next day rapidly reduces your costs so when you're looking at your profit margin have a look about how you can actually improve it now uh, problem students encounter there's nothing specific in questions they expect you to use your business knowledge so if there's nothing specific in the question to indicate why their expenses have gone up start thinking about your hr strategies productivity training motivation absenteeism are you following up on staff who are basically calling sick all the time and taking full pay energy saving schemes look at renewable technologies investment capital equipment boost productivity reduce labor where you can 
look at the use of AI technologies, technology generally, where you can actually replace labor with capital, uh, which in the longer term, well, medium to longer term, will save you a hell of a lot of money. So here, just some concluding thoughts on the gross and the profit margin. Take a look, you need to be able to evaluate what do they actually measure, the ratios? What does it actually mean for stakeholders? Now remember the communication device, which is the statement. You're using the ratios to interpret that communication device for stakeholders. And the stakeholders need to make decisions. So here, hopefully you've got all the evaluation points you need for the gross and profit margin. Now, there's always confusion on the ROCE, return on capital employed. Some students argue it's an efficiency ratio, some profit. For IB purposes, it's profit. But it's the efficiency with which you use your assets to generate income, and therefore a return on investment made. Just take a look at the formula. Okay, It's a capital employed. You've had a certain amount of money as a business. What have you done with that money? You've generated a profit. And you're looking at the operating profit, which is the profit for interest and tax. The profit from your normal day-to-day -day business activities. So it's how efficient you've used the capital you have in generating a profit. If this ratio is going up, the people who have invested in the business, hold capital in that business, are generating a higher return on investment, hence it's a percentage. And all return on investment is, you think about your bank account, you put your money in, they pay you interest. The interest paid is return on your investment. So do not become confused. Yes, it's efficiency in the use of the capital, but your measuring for the stakeholders, for the investors, is what return on investment are you generating? Hence, that looks at your profit and your future profitability potential as an investment source for stakeholders. Okay, back to the basics, liquidity, definitions. Liquidity is the ability of a business to pay short-term debts. It's cash flow. Now, if you run out of cash, the cash is the lifeblood of the business. If you run out of cash, basically go bust. You will fail as a business. Two ratios, carrot and acid test. Current, you'll find two possibilities as a benchmark, 1.5 or 2 to 1. Now, be that dollars, euros, pounds, whatever. 2 to 1, that means 2 pounds of short-term assets for every 1 pound you owe. The acid test is 1 to 1. Now, the acid test is seen as a more reliable indicator of your liquidity position, your ability to pay short-term debts, purely because it looks at the most liquid assets. And liquid assets are those assets which are easy to turn into cash in the short term. And stock is taken out of the calculation because if you suddenly have an invoice to pay, you have a supplier chasing you and you need $50,000 by the end of the day. If you start ringing around people and say, well, look, I have 100 tons of X to sell. People will try and negotiate and say, I'll call you back. Um, whereas if you ring up your debtors, people who owe you money, and say, look, I'll give you 5% discount for payments today, you're more likely to be able to turn that debt into cash on the day. So acid test focuses on the most liquid assets. Those are the ones which are very quickly turned into cash. And clear, obvious point of attack for exam questions. Analysis evaluation, how do you actually improve liquidity ratios? All you need to do is focus on current assets and current liabilities. So debtors, for example, offer discounts to debtors for early payments. So cash comes in far earlier than normal. They have 60 days to pay, offer 5% for 30 days. Um, what else could you do? Cut the amount of time debtors have to pay. So if you are off in 60 days, cut it again down to 30. That could be a problem if there is lots of choice, you have competition. If competitors continue to offer 60 days, you know, customers may decide to migrate to the opposition and then for you lose basically sales. So you could shoot yourself in the foot, unintended consequences of the action. Again, this is analysis, this is evaluation.
look at your current liabilities, stock, uh, stock control methods, just in time, just in case. Lots of stocks sitting on the shelf is simply just money being wasted. Until you actually sell that stock, you cannot turn it into a cash. So look at your stock control method. Look at the length of time you have to pay your suppliers. Can you actually negotiate longer payment periods? 30, 60, 90 days, what are you paying at the moment? Could you actually you know, negotiate a longer pay payment period and therefore you know, longer time you have to find the money to pay your suppliers? The efficiency ratios just for HL only students. Now, issues to look out for, stock turnover. You could be ambushed two different methods of calculating stock turnover one gives you number of times the other gives you number of days so item one there stock turnover gives you the number of times per year per quarter whatever time period you're using to measure that you turn over your stock turn over your stock simply means change your stock so the efficiency is if the number of times goes up Theoretically, you're selling more products because you're selling your stock. Your stock levels are going down. You have to replace your stock. So number of times going up, again, sign of efficiency. Stock turnover in days, you simply look at how long it takes you before you have to replace your stock. If the number of days is going up, you've got a problem. Why it's taking you longer to replace your stock. That's normally an indication you have a problem. You're not making sales. Your stock levels are not going down. Debtors turnover, simply that's length of time it takes for debtors to pay what they owe you. Now, obviously, if that time is going up, that could cause liquidity problems. You will have allocated 30, 60, 90 days and agreed payment period for debtors. So if you've agreed 30 days, they're taking 45. You've got inefficiency in terms of your credit control. You should be chasing debtors to make sure the money you're owed comes in on time to boost your cash flow and protect your liquidity position. Similarly, creditors turnover. Now, if that time is going up, on one hand, it's positive. You're getting longer to pay your creditors. On the other hand, if these are suppliers we're talking about, a supplier could turn around and say, well, look, you should have been paying 30 days. You're taking 50 days. Um, cash sales only from now on. Okay, that's the only basis we'll supply you on. And therefore, that will cause you liquidity problems. You have to find the cash to pay at the time you're supplied rather than waiting 30, 60, 90 days before you have to pay your suppliers. Now, gearing ratio. Two sides of the gearing ratio. What it actually does, it measures what proportion of the total capital available to the business you have to pay interest on. Now, high level answers in terms of analysis and evaluation. You link gearing ratio to liquidity and sources of finance okay, from the syllabus. This is where they will attack you in terms of an exam question potentially. So if you have an investment project, you're looking to raise capital, how are you going to fund this new investment project? If you take out lots of loans, that means increased, increased interest payments. Increased interest payments equals cash outflows, again, liquidity. So gearing on one hand measures the level of risk of failure of the business. The gearing ratio is going up and normally above 50% is seen as potentially risky. You should start looking at a situation and say, well, hang on, you know, can we reduce the figure? On the other hand, it depends on the industry average. Some industries, pharmaceuticals, for example, could have 80, 90 percent gearing ratios, and that's the industry average. That's the norm. Now, on the other side of the argument, gearing ratios, if they're too low, could also be an issue. If your gearing ratio is, say, 20 percent below your main competitors, on one hand, that's protecting your liquidity and your risk of failure. On the other hand, are your competitors borrowing to invest? If they're borrowing to invest, they could be moving ahead of you in terms of competitiveness and therefore gain risk of failure of the business. The last points for this revision video, simply what I've just said. Go through, make sure, you know, remember it's HL only. 
you're quite comfortable with what the ratios are. Remember efficiency, it's the efficiency of operation of the business, its assets to generate revenues. Now, if you're lacking in efficiency, you have issues. Stock turnover and gearing are the two ratios which tend to cause issues for students. So take some time to have a look at the points made here and the points I've made already. Now, hopefully this video has been useful. Uh, good luck with your studies. Please keep looking at our YouTube channel. We will be uploading more revision videos as we go. Thank you.